Hi, this is William Ramsey. Welcome to William Ramsey Investigates. On tonight's show, I have a very special guest. His name is Alan R. Warren. He is a true crime author, and he's just published a book that uh, I, I saw with great interest when I saw it pop up on my social media. The title of the book is The Grinder Serial Killer, Stephen Port, British Criminals, Volume 2. And I covered Stephen Port, and I investigated his uh, serial murder case in Reading outside of uh, London, East London, uh, that uh, these murders occurred uh, fairly recently, I think in 2014 and 2015. But uh, Alan's going to uh, tell us a lot more about this case. And Alan, are you there? Yes, yes oh, I am. Awesome. Thanks for uh, agreeing to the interview. I'm delighted that uh, you're able to talk about this, this book that was just published this month, um, and it's available now on Amazon. But before we kind of get into the material, maybe you could... Uh, tell the audience a little bit about your background. Well, where do I start? I uh, <laughs> I um, produce um, a radio show called The House of Mystery. It's on KCAA in L.A., and uh, it's on a few other syndicated stations as well. It uh, covers true crime, history, paranormal, and conspiracy. Uh, but more from a logical point of view. We don't just jump off the the edge of the world with this. And um, I've been writing true crime books for a while now, and uh, I think Stephen Port book is the ninth book I have published. Oh, congrats. Well, yeah. Great. Yeah. So um, so when is the House of Mystery, when does it, is it a live show or is it recorded? It's 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 live originally Monday to Friday, and then it it's syndicated through the NBC West feed. So uh, everywhere from Salt Lake down to Phoenix and over to the to the shore. So Seattle, Portland, Tacoma, and each station runs it at a different time depending on their. It's up to them how they do it, and it's on podcast after it airs on on all the stations. It goes on a podcast form. And it's on most major, like iTunes and uh, iHeart and uh, Spotify, all cool. the major. House platforms. of Mystery, Alan R. Warren. Um, just to uh, let the audience know, we might be talking about some disturbing subjects. There's uh, Stephen Port was convicted for killing four men and uh, under very gruesome circumstances. So just uh, a warning to listeners not to you know, have this open while uh, children or people who might be sensitive to this topic are around so um, why don't you how did you get interested in the subject of Stephen Port well you know that that's a funny thing um, when we when we run our Friday show um, I have a medium called Julie Sav and she is out of the UK from uh, America's Most Haunted all that sort of series and uh, and I went to uh, college with her years ago so we know each other and she runs the Friday show and the reason that brought this in was because um, a woman named um, Jackie Dennison, actually, who's a psychic over there, uh, does a lot of these cold case files and stuff. And I've had her uh, on the show, and I've known her for years. She used to have a TV show. And uh, I know she mentioned the case, and she mentioned some other cases, too, that I've sort of followed up on. And that's how I kind of got interested in the case itself. And, of course, you know, I, w I went further than that. But that's that's what brought brought attention to me. So she was just following the cases. It was breaking kind of back fairly recently, really. I think he was arrested yeah. in 2017, right? Yeah, that's right. I think that uh, what it was was um, she was actually uh, friends with a family um, of a child, a boy that was missing. And it ended up being, he ended up being part of the Moore's murders. But, it, you know, it's a totally different case. Mm -hmm. But uh, because of her fame, she got involved in this one. And then, and I always like hearing stories. And when you hear an interesting story and some of the things that happened in this case, I thought, well, that's crazy. Um, it's something we never catch on. And this publisher um, was doing a series of British crimes. And so I said to him, um, you know, I've got some contacts and some information. And and that's the other thing, too, because I came across uh, Cody Lockie, mm -hmm. and he is an ex-felon and in Manchester. And he had been a pen pal of uh, Stephen Port. Gotcha. 
and and so he was on a documentary uh, a long time ago, and uh, so we connected. And uh, over the time, I've I've known him and all that stuff. And then, being that I'm writing the book, I just said, hey, you know what would add a really nice touch would be if I uh, kind of focused on four or five letters and kind of give people the feel of what Stephen is like from prison. Gotcha. And you include those letters. So that, those are remarkable insight into uh, Stephen Port because he's very voluble. He writes these kind of long, detailed letters, whether, you know, people can t- take those with a grain of salt or not. You know, it's uh, it's very interesting. Oh, totally. But but the whole, the whole idea, I think, for, for me is just to put it in so people can get a feel for what he talks like, how he acts, and, and how he represents himself. And again, you're right, grain of salt. You've got a serial killer that's in prison, and he's giving his kind of defense, in a sense, of what happened. And I think that's interesting, because you kind of, you know. No, you, it is you very kind of, you, Yeah, and you kind of know. And I've got several. I've got over a dozen, three or four page letters from him. So I kind of put in the key ones that where he talks about the case or a little bit about uh, you know his lifestyle as as a and what it's like to be a prostitute because that's kind of what Cody's angle was. Cody was talking to him about what it would be like to be a male prostitute and what he should do and how he should do it and what he should be careful of and and so Stephen was giving him guidelines on how to be a good male hooker. <laughs> wow, fascinating. <laughs> So maybe that's where we can start is let's talk about uh, these these cases and how they came to the attention of the police and, their, and how Stephen Port was involved in it. Well, geez, you know, the, the police seem to be not really interested. Um, uh, th- that's kind of a, it's a disappointing case for, for me as far as the way the police handle it because, um, you know, it took four or five bodies before they started paying attention and even then they were almost forced to by one of the victims two sisters who kind of pushed it and pushed it and that's the only reason initially it started getting some sort of ground uh because they 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 were ignoring it and it's really really disappointing that's the i have to leave it at that but um uh the first victim was anthony walgate and he was 23 years old. And, uh, and what was his background? Well, he was a fashion student, and he was uh, he was a young college student, student wanted to be a fashion designer, and uh, kind of doing that sort of thing. And 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 he partied a lot. And um, at times, now this is kind of a, I got some references that at times he would go on the Sleepy Boys app, the Sleepy Boys app in the UK is a way of offering sex for money. Uh Some people call it escort. But it's it's kind of almost like our grinder over here or any of the other apps. You're going to have a mix of people that just want to meet and some people that want sex and some that offer massages, like whatever. Is Sleepy Boy the number one app in the UK? Is that correct? It it was. It was. I don't know if it still is. Okay. Um, when I was doing it, it was it was a really hot app, you know. And you find that region to region because I travel a lot with my jobs in, in life, and everywhere I go, um, and that's with any type of app and stuff. You'll find certain ones are more popular in certain areas than others. And uh, Sleepy Boys is, was one of the big thing, but they didn't. Um, in, in America, we were dealing with um, you know back page. And um, Craigslist was more of the place that escorts advertised than back, on apps. back in the day before these apps. Now I think that uh, Backpage is gone, right? Yeah, Backpage was, sh- you know, and that was a bad mistake because uh, they 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 really pushed against it, and finally the FBI closed them down. And and it really it it took away their tools because now it's still going on. People are still advertising, and the reason they were catching. Um, you know, like in the human trafficking area where people were being stolen and sold uh, into sex slavery, they were using Backpage to, to advertise their their sex slaves. And now we have no follow-up. The FBI used to be able to find victims and rescue them from their situation, uh, which is different than what this was, Stephen Port and this, but in that situation, but because of things like Stephen Port, 
FBI takes down Backpage and Craigslist as far as all the escort services. So now the escort services are going on, but more blindly, they have no follow-up to it. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. so, so, this first victim, uh, Anthony Walgate, he was using Sleepy Boy. He was making money uh, as a male ex- escort, and then he he just kind of disappeared. Correct? Yeah. Uh, you know, well, actually, what with with Walgate, he was the one that what happened was um, he he went he went out drinking, and he was going to meet someone. Uh, and he told his friend in an email, uh, a girlfriend, and said, hey, I'm going to meet this guy. You know, he's offering me 800 pounds to spend the night with him. And uh, so I just thought I'd tell you in case I get killed. And and he did it for a joke. Like it wasn't he wasn't serious. They were just bantering. And he ended up not coming home. And on the 19th, early in the morning, two days later, what happened was Stephen Port actually called 999, which is their version of 911, and reported that there was a body in the uh, front stairway of his apartment building. And it looked like he was the guy was overdosed or drunk or maybe even dead. He didn't know. And um, so that call uh, was kind of weird when you listen to it. Um, that was really unique. So that audio is available. Uh, yeah, the audio is available, and I think I put the link in um, in the book for people if they wanted to find it, and I might even have transcribed it. I can't remember. I know I did at the time because it's a little bit fuzzy, and I want to get all the correct wording out. But um, he actually called them and said he saw this body on his way to work, <laughs> and, and they called back a few times. The police came, found Anthony Walgate's body, slumped he was overdosed there was a needle beside the body and um, some little vials the two and they had the GHB um, which is known as the date rape rape drug over in America here um, right so yeah. the GHB was found on him gamma hydro hydroxybutyric acid right so that and known by a variety of different names yeah yeah and it depends on the the formulation and there and and now in England it's huge, even in parts of Canada and even parts of the states. In the gay community, it's a really big um, drug to mix with other drugs. I didn't know um, that. So yeah, what other well, drugs are they commonly mixing that with? <clears throat> well, in in that community in the UK, it was with crystal meth, which wow. Uh, you know, wow. That sounds um, dangerous. Yeah. But what it does is it enhances the high. Um, that you have, and it makes it last longer. So a lot of people um, can get can take it to enhance the drug they're using, and give it a longer longer lasting time. So and they they started calling it party and play P and P. And so when they talk on um, the different apps and, and uh, sex sites and stuff and meeting sites even, uh, people will say like P and P. Or gotcha. um, party and play, and what it is is, yeah, we like to do these drugs and and get high, and and there's actually groups on the Sleepy Boy and Grinder app that they have parties, so you can set up a party. Let's say you want to get together, you set up a party on on Grinder, let's say, and you can invite anybody, and it's a chemsex party or a party and play. Wow, I and. Know that. You, you, yeah, and you name the place and the time. You have to be there. Let's say it should be at 9 o'clock. And the doors close at 10. So basically everyone gets there between 9 and 10. The doors get locked. Everyone gets naked. They all do this drug, and then they have sex for in some of the party's last days. Remarkable. Wow. That sounds yeah, like the bathhouse is back when I lived in San Francisco. like those kind Well, of and that's actually it's what it is. It's kind of the modern-day bathhouse. Gotcha. Interesting. Uh, is what it is facilitated by an app, right? Or facilitated by yeah. these gotcha. It's, it's just, yeah, it's a good way of hey, let's open a bathhouse tonight. Wow, <laughs> interesting. You know wow. what I mean? And, and it's kind of a uh, it just goes with the modern day of technology of how we connect and, and do everything instantly, right? It's, it's you know, and that's one I, of the interesting it, things about this case is how all of these modern elements of these new drugs and these websites kind of. Uh, coalesced into 
this serial killing case. Yeah. Well, I guess, you know what it is, is you see, the young, younger you are, the, no, the more you're into this. And it's the new way. And it's just like it was when, when we were younger. We all, we all find the new way and we do it. But the problem with you when you're young is you don't have the knowledge. Like you have, you're able to understand the app and the technology and you can do all that, but you don't have the knowledge of being alive for a long time. <laughs> so you don't realize that the, the, um, the things you can get caught up in or the things that could actually end up hurting you. You know, it's that old thing because so, so that's kind of the downfall. Um, it's all new and exciting to the people in that young in the 20s. Um, but it opens them up to a lot of things that they're not aware of. Right. And that was kind of, a, that was Stephen Port. Um, he was much older than his victims, right? He was a good 20 years older, much more experienced. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he was, um, I think, 41 by the time they caught him. And his, his trying to remember. 20s, yeah, early 20s. Yeah. So he was, and what he did was, of course, you know, he um, he was thin and tall, and, and he wore a wig. <laughs> so he tried to look younger, more. Yeah. yeah, he had this blonde wig, and I put that picture in there, and it looks pretty good. You don't, it doesn't look like a fake wig, but when you look at him on the cover, that's him when he's arrested without the wig, as compared to inside the book when he's taking his picture for Grinder. It's all he, totally he, different. He had a good hair piece, actually, and <laughs> but he got know, in trouble uh, before he got arrested. He had been in court already over the Walgate case, right? Um, yeah, he got, you see, cause this first, this Anthony Walgate, what he did was he, uh, so they, they found the body, did all this, you know, research and come back and talk to him. And he sort of said, no, I don't know who he is. I just saw him on the way out to work. But then when the police checked Anthony Walgate's phone, they found out that he was actually in contact and the two of them had planned to meet and were going to, you know, so then when they came back with that, um, you know, of course, he had to admit, yeah. But what he said was he said that the two of them got together, they had sex, spent the night, and then he uh, went to work, come back, and then um, they, they had sex again. But th this time, Walgate did a big pile of more GHB and drugs. And then he said he went and showered. And when he came back from the shower, uh, Walgate was shaking like a, you know, like a snake and, and freaking out and doing all this. And he didn't know what to do, so he dragged the body out on the front and called 999 and that's why he did it but, and they believed him they believed him right yeah they, they give him uh he had to wear um he got a like a fine he got a, a probation and he had to wear one of those little leg braces for a while but it, it was really kind of a slap on the wrist right so i mean they believed his story and then probably within the same year or something a year or two there's more uh, bodies of young men found nearby his his apartment, right? Oh yeah, that was it. Was really just three months later oh. that um, that they started finding it. And and this this woman um, Barbara Dunham, she's sixty seven at the time, and she'd been walking her dog. He, his building was really across from a, a park, and this park was part of a church. That was, uh, you know, really old church that they had kind of redone in parts. And it's, it wasn't like a functioning church. It was more of a tourist place. And um, it had an old graveyard and, and fencing, and it was kind of kept up. Um, she would walk her dog there uh, every morning. And in, it was just in August, I think the 20th, in 2014, she was walking her dog, and she saw this man's just sitting upright leaning against the brick fence outside of the church and uh she let her dog go and he was doing his thing and she went over and started talking to the guy and he didn't move or didn't answer so then she tapped him on the foot and he still didn't do and so she put her hand down and felt him and he was cold so she reported it to the police and that was um gabriel Cavari. Now, he was only a 22-year-old, and he was um, recently relocated from uh, Slavia. Mm -hmm. So he, he, was, he, wasn't, he hadn't been in the community that long, and he was fairly young. And uh, again, he had, was found with vials of um, GHB and some other powder. 
and also the needle and 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 a, and a few other syringe, a few other things around. So uh, the police took it to it as an overdose. Gotcha. They just said, well, it's just, you know. Now, that park was known as a cruisy park for gays as well. Gotcha. Uh, men would go there and meet and, and fool around. And, and a lot of drug addicts would go, go there and do drugs. You know, it was a park, that kind of park. So it would be expected that if there, you know, that wasn't unexpected to find an overdose body there. It wasn't out. No, not at all. Yeah. You know, it happened a lot. Gotcha. In fact, several. And in fact, what I can tell you is later, after these crimes were all uh, proven to be Stephen Port, um, they have to look into, they have to reopen 68 uh, drug overdoses in that park it's that amazing. year. It's amazing. So, so we're talking, there's a lot of drug activity going on in that park. If they had 68 overdoses in that year period. It's incredible. Yeah. So, so that, like, it shows wow. that Port was very clever, very cunning in in kind of making this this Kovari death look uh, like a, like an overdose instead of murder. It, totally. Uh, it was just it just fit right in. I think what happened was with with Walgate the first one, it was kind of a learning curve. Uh, he he saw how the police acted and what he could get away with. And then he started, and then he used the park with Kavari, which seemed to be a smarter way of doing it because that's where it was happening all the time. Bodies were turning up a lot. There was a lot of drug activity, sex activity. Um, not too hard to fit in, you know. Right. Um, yeah. And and then it happened again. Right. And and that was a short time after <clears throat> they found Daniel Whitworth. Now he was twenty one. He was from Kent, so he was from the UK. He wasn't uh, more of a, it's a smaller suburb compared to being in London in, in this part of town, in the city. So um, so that that was, and it was the same thing. And it was the same dog walker that found this body. Wow. I mean, that must have been, that's why I called, I think that chapter I called, oh no, not another one. Right. Because... You know, she's out two and two. It was it was a matter of like um, within two months, two amazing. bodies. So like, the next Daniel amazing. Whitworth, but the Daniel Whitworth was different because he had a suicide note. Yeah, and that that's that's where that you know this is where this is the real question in the case because okay, you've got a third body here, uh, and Whitworth had this suicide note, and I put a copy in it and I transcribed it because it's a little rough. And basically it's saying that him and Kavari, the body from before, a month before, were, were um, having sex a month before and doing JHB and drugs, and Kavari overdosed and died. So now Whitworth, a month later, was feeling so guilty about it, he couldn't live anymore. So he was killing himself, and he was sorry to the family and blah, blah, blah. Like, it was that kind of a note. Mm -hmm. But the weird part was that then it was like a PS, or by the way, BT is what they called it. And he goes, now, the, the, guy, the guy you saw me with last night has nothing to do with this, wow. just so you know. Right. And so, you know, you kind of go, well, is that, now that's completely stupid. Right, like why me. would somebody write that in a suicide note? Yeah, and you're like, oh, don't don't worry about the guy you if you see, and it's like, what are you talking about? I'd be mean, like the guy you were with. So that kind of was freaky. But the, the thing is, the police came, got the body, same thing, did nothing, right. even with that note, and even when they asked Whitworth's parents and showed them the note, even uh, the mother said, absolutely, that's not his note, that's not his handwriting. And the dad said he couldn't tell, but that's kind of dads are that way, you know, sometimes. Right. But it, it absolutely wasn't his, but, you know, they did nothing. They right. just sort of so um, they put it up. accepted those two, deaths. right. They accepted those two deaths. And yeah. And that, that, oh, no, but you, that's, that's the turning point, and that's what's craziest, because the police still, at that point, even with a note, you you see, because what 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 I mean is, because they emphasized that none of the none of the deaths in the park had anything to do with each other. Right. 
So, so publicly they were saying that Kavari, Whitworth, and Walgate deaths all had nothing to do with each other. There was nothing that tied them together. But they had the suicide note with Whitworth mentioning Kavari. So that in itself ties those two people together. Right. Uh, yeah. So the police are uh, yeah, not really doing any investigating at all. No. And because of the way and when it all turned out, 17 of those cops got reprimanded. Gotcha. Um, and there's still the inquest that hasn't even come back yet. So it's supposed to. No. They're doing a full yeah. investigation and, and they're taking their time, yeah. it seems like, because I've been waiting for that inquest <laughs> to come back and look in. But the court cases the are back, back. And those are to right. tell a story, yeah. So you've yeah. got three it, deaths. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. One of the. Oh, I'm and, sorry. Please continue. No, I was going to say, so that's kind of, you know, we know that this is a, a bad situation. And the, then then long, along comes Jack Taylor, 25 years old, forklift operator. And um, same thing. Um, and that was only September. So you got to think, you know, the very first one back four deaths ago was only June. So th- he was becoming very... Um, nonchalant about killing it, it obviously didn't bother him anymore he was getting into it so to speak and so the same thing they met in a nap picked each other up met each other walked back to um port's apartment and had sex and uh jack taylor was found in the same park um i think maybe a day later he was on the same fence as the other two boys but he was on the other side of the fence. Gotcha. So um, they found him, same thing. They put him in as a drug overdose. overdose, And it was the same way. Found him with GHB and some pills and a syringe. So it was just uh, put as a um, overdose. And that's that, but that was the turning part because Jack Taylor's two sisters didn't believe it. And when they started looking back through the cases, they spotted and they found out about the, the note from Whitworth about Kavari. And then they went to the inspectors and questioned them and said, why you, would you say none of them have anything to do each, with each other? And the note mentions two names that are both dead. They have to have something to do with each other. So and, and, and what they did was they kind of poo-pooed them. And, and then eventually they said, well, look. We'll we'll take you, so we'll take you and we'll go through the CT footage. So they they went through and most of London for the people that don't realize this is under film. They've got more cameras around the city of London than probably all of the United States. It's right. completely watched. Super surveillance and there, CCTV. Right. Yeah, and their surveillance also is um, they've got the software that they can put a prisoner's face into the system and the software will look for that face and if you walk into the camera that person's with that face it'll notify the police this person's on this street wow yeah so super sophisticated and that's scary for some people but it seems to be working for them (laughs) so i i know i don't get into the comment so when they went through the the footage then they all of a sudden found jack taylor walking home with um port the port's place and then they started to investigate and they found that the apps and the meetings and that it all started falling apart for port and thanks to the pressure of the sisters that they put on it and they also went to like the gay magazine pink news and pink news did big articles warning everybody about a serial killer on the loose in the gay community and so it all sort of broke loose then all of a sudden so that was it and they brought him in there are the detailed um, and outline with the police, what not confession, but their investigation includes video of Port just denying constantly uh, that whether he knew them or whether he was involved. You know, he just yeah. denied, denied, denied. Yeah, all the way through. Um, it, it, you know, he, you know, he did it. I mean, there was no doubt. Um, and you know, and even in his letters, when you look. And he talks about the case. He, he, you know, every one of them, he had this defense of every single one of these guys. Now he admits to taking home and sleeping with, but every single one of them overdosed themselves. 
he would never do drugs. He would never. And meanwhile, you know, you look at the pictures in his of his apartment. He's got more drugs around. He was giving these people um, the GHB. And then he would inject uh, poppers into their arms. Wow. So poppers is what you know you take when you um, have heart problems. Right, it opens, Yeah, and it opens up all the you know the the little vessels and stuff. And it's and it's used in the gay community because it makes it easier. You're relaxed and you can have sex, and it's easier. It's not, and it's apparently supposed to make it last longer. So people will mix that. Those two drugs are quite popular, wow. along with crystal meth. So you get you know these these cam sex parties. So and didn't and didn't they Port have, have just GHP sitting on the coffee table like massive amounts oh, of that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He had massive amounts. In fact, the picture I put, you know, he has so many so many drugs in his place. And even when the police came in and out, even with the first one, they were all there and they didn't put two and two together. And that's sort of uh, and and I think the reason was is because they didn't really care. The the officers that dealt with this didn't really take the time to really have a look. They didn't they didn't associate anything. Right. Whether it's anti gay or if it's just um they're lazy. They may I, not know, have I understood too, you know, they may not have understood the whole GHB, chemsex culture, parody and totally. play culture. Totally. Know. I you know, I agree with all that. It could have been any of it. I, I'm not I'm not playing I'm not putting a particular blame on a person or a reason. But um, overall, they really kind of dropped the ball. Uh, they just sort of let this happen. And and again, like I said, now they're reopening 68 other overdoses that happened in that same park. Because, you know, how do we know how many he really killed and how many didn't? I don't want to get conspiratorial there, but on well, that whole that's couple a good of years, point. I mean, how many other people did they kill or, or they've made if their bodies might be somewhere else, right? Right. I mean, because if they didn't actually, partic- and even when the ones that they did have, they had the two with the note and then Jack Taylor. And Jack Taylor's sisters pulled it. They get, this, they get the film footage to prove it, then the app. So these they sort of are forced to deal with. But of the other 68, who knows? That there was all the same timing. He was there. All these people are dying. Maybe it was just another handful. Maybe it was just one. Uh, who knows? Right. Um, well, that's, you that's know, a it, scary thought that he might have been a, a very learned, competent serial killer, killing tons of people. Oh, you know? oh, yeah, totally. And you don't know where, you know, if someone's doing it, they're doing it. You know, you know, there's so many theories out there. Do killers stop? Do they start? Do they take time off? Right. The, I hear all sorts of stuff from people, and I don't know that we really have a an answer. We have a generalization, but... Who knows when he was starting and when he stopped and what he was thinking and how many he did. And uh, the police obviously, just from this little touch of these five bodies, didn't really investigate any of them, including the other 68. They were all just ruled off. And, you know, why I say that, too, is because almost every one of these cases were closed within two days. Wow, that's incredible. Just done. Yeah. So, no more investigation, so you, no nothing. There. Yeah, pick up the body, print. Okay, right then. <laughs> and right. then two days later, they're signing off. So that was, I mean, as report goes, I mean, he was successful in tricking the police, but he was also very clever by, like, he took on a fake name, John Luck, and befriended a boyfriend of Gabriel Govari to keep an eye mm-hmm. on the investigation to make sure that they didn't think it was murder. You know, so he was using oh, yeah. the, the Internet cleverly. Oh, totally, totally. And and he was another one of those guys that had a real persona. Like even his Facebook, I've got the link, and it was still up when I wrote it. And even that, he was like, uh, you know, he's a chef, and right. and uh, and he was uh, he had all these great jobs. But the truth was, um, the good job that he did have, he got fired from after Anthony Walgate, because as soon as he got arrested for that indecency. They um, they fired him. So he was working at a bus stop, <laughs> you know, like a Greyhound bus stop. He was working in one of their uh, in the kitchen. Gotcha. Right. So so you know it wasn't like like what he made it to be. He, he made it, it sound like, 
But he was on you know, a TV show. He was on like a competitive cooking show too, though, right? Yeah, Celebrity Chef UK, and he was in the top three. And they made over a hundred burgers um, or some some sort of special food for a lot of homeless people, and it was a big show. And he did well in it. And again, uh, you know, but that was kind of pre all of this stuff, as far as we know. Yeah, I mean, the reason I got into Stephen Port was because I was investigating similar cases of men who went out at bars or either had been uh, exposed to GHB being found in water. It's known as the smiley face killers. But those are similar to Port because people don't identify these men found in water as murders. They're uh, typified as accidental drownings. And so they're not investigated either, much like the Port cases. And my basic conclusion is that these are actually murders not um, accidental drownings happening all over the world. A lot in the UK, they just had one uh, close in London, close to his port with this young man. I can't remember his name, but uh, that was really what sparked my interest in port. And they actually had another guy similar. His name was Bruce MacArthur, and he was in Toronto. And right. the police said there wasn't a serial killer, but all these men disappeared. He had a typology. He liked kind of these certain types of men. And he was on these dating apps. He was gay. He was on all kinds of grinder and all this stuff. And they finally, the police, when they arrested Bruce MacArthur, it was because he had a man tied up. He liked like kind of like bondage, BDSM. He had a man tied up in his bed. And, uh, you know, so they found out that he at least killed, at least killed eight people. You know, I don't know how many. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's tough. And then he was putting the bodies in the, uh, right. in the planters because he was exactly. uh, yeah, yeah. So, so somewhat similar to Port, you know, the serial killer, gay community, people are disappearing. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, these things, yeah. things do happen. I think the most, the most annoying thing is that it's still, um, it's still when you get, you know, because even in, and we're talking even in Canada, in a civilized country, um, probably much more civilized than the U.S., and you've got, um, um, you know the, the the highway of tears where all the native girls are going missing, and you've right. got that MacArthur, and you had Luca Magnata before that, where right. he was uh, eating people, and and so, the, but the whole thing is unfortunately policing in general, um, minorities like like that, and um, you know gays, minorities, prostitutes, things like that, they don't invest a lot of time in. That's what it you seems know. like, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I don't think they understand them, to be honest with you. They don't understand the drug sex, the chem sex, the GHB. I mean, some, when I was oh, reading I, I, some yeah, of the, yeah, yeah. the stuff I agree. about... I know sorry. it totally. Yeah. I watch these things even on Netflix, and you see that. Uh, you know, it's, it's made a real negative. Um, if you've ever watched The Staircase on Netflix... Right, Peterson, yeah. With the owl thing, and Michael Peterson, because he had sex with men on the side the the whole court case was all built around him being a cheater and and into male sex and this is why you know he must have killed his wife it was really kind of how they presumed it and anybody that's against that lifestyle or that notion um jumped on it and it was really easy to do that even though they knew that the wife had known for years and she didn't care Interesting. right yeah. so, so. It wasn't it, a cause. It's easier factor. to demon. Yeah, you know, if you demonize your victim, then it's not as important. Good you know, point. Excellent I, point. Excellent. And that's the sad part of it because, uh, you know, that's where you find equality is really um, lacking. Excellent. Uh, is that's a great point. And yeah. They, well, in case you know, murder and sex and all that whole thing, it's not really. Uh, there's not compassion for someone if you think that they're. Well, she was just a prostitute. They're not you as know, equal, not, asked, as, uh, not as important. Yeah. Right. Or, you know, or he's gay, you know. It, it, there's still that going on. And, it, uh, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that that's going on factually. And I think that we need, it's just going to take more time to grow out of this, I guess. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, those are excellent points. I mean, the uh, the court case, when they when they found their conclusions and convicted Port, there he was involved in drugging other people who didn't die, so the other people right. survived Port, right? Exactly, and this is sort of this is sort of uh, it, it adds to the case of how many of those uh, sixty eight other people um, were involved with him, 
because he had, you know, we had that uh, the Muslim boy that testified about being assaulted and drugged by by port, and he got away. He made it out right. Right. So I mean, where? Yeah, and that, you have to kind of like, well, where did, where does this go then? Like, what? You know, it kind of shows you that he he didn't just do these five. He was assaulting people, and some died, some didn't. And we don't know how many of them. And, you know, to be honest, I don't think we'll ever know. Yeah, it's a shame, too, because a lot of those GHB uh, inhibits memory. So there could be people out there who don't even know, like something bad happened. They woke up, um, you know, and it's kind of similar to a lot of these smiley face killer cases where people would come out. They just had something about this kid, Dakota James in Pittsburgh, didn't know where he was. There's all people who emulate GHB poisoning where they're unsteady incoherent you know so he i mean if he had this massive storehouse of ghb it's probably because he's using a lot of it right i mean so he might have yeah. got away with a lot of stuff you don't have big old court you know case yeah. after canister after canister of ghb because you're you're storing it it's because you're using it i would assume yeah and only that well we know that he was he was um working these parties as well so these people that would host a GHB party or chemsex party would basically hire him to come and he would um, do drugs and, and bring drugs and he would get sex and money and he would be kind of, they call them hosts. So, the, you know, these people doing a party would have a couple of hosts gotcha, and these hosts like yeah, so he would come and he supplies the drugs and and uh, he can also bring people and so it ends up being a big party. Everybody pays to get in for this party, so the people hosting it make money, and it's sort of a plan. It's all worked out, you know. So this is all uh, it's down to a little bit of a science here. So did you uh, find his stories of the, the chem sex and stuff credible? I mean, he had been an escort for a decade or something like that too, right? Right. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, for sure. I, I, you know, I think he sounded pretty reasonable with most of them, and from others I've interviewed and other I've talked to, and and being involved in the community and areas, um, it sounds pretty logistical. Like what he, the way he describes it and writes it, it sounds, it's that's he's pretty dead on on how it, what goes on and how it goes on and and uh, what they do and everything. So, okay. you know, the very least he went to these parties. Right, and he uh, seemed to know about the drinks. When I read the letters that he was setting, uh, writing with Cody Lachey, he's like, never accept a drink here. Like, he knew for like, the insider knowledge, right? That's what it sounded like to me. Yeah, you know, it's kind of, like I said, you know, it's uh, he's definitely involved in it. He knows the community. He knows what's going on in life. And uh, he's been, he's at least been to the parties, been to the hookups, and he's been around them. So whether he hosted and supplied drugs or not, I don't know. Um, he says he did. I don't know why he would have to lie about that. If anything, by him saying that, it makes him sound a little worse, you know? Well, his victims so. like fit the profile of the smiley face killer victims. They're all basically look the same, like Stephen Port's. Younger, yep. skinnier, yep. referred to yep. in the community as a twink that you write, yep. write about in your book. Um, oh, yeah. for sure. He was he was really into the twink, the bottom, the femme sort of uh, look. You know, he liked a feminine guy. He he That was his, you know, I guess we all have our tastes, and that was his taste. And he, he, um, he took advantage of it, and he took advantage of a lot of them that were, were young. Whether he was doing sex, um, like, I don't know that, you know, he obviously overdosed them with the GHB. They'd pass out. Mm. Um, so how many of them actually did those drugs and was into that before what? they met him? I, I, it's, I, you know, we can't tell, you know. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Um, you know, there's... like... A, yeah. Yeah, the Kavari guy, I don't think so. 22, and he's from Slovakia. I, yeah, just been there a year. I, I, I don't think he was a big person in the in the community, so to speak. I don't think he was that involved yet. Right. And but, even, well, Taylor, the sister said, there's no way he drug overdose because he doesn't use drugs, right? That's what made them suspicious. 
Right, right. And that's well, and, and, and uh, Jack Taylor was that was that victim. And he was really kind of the odd man out in a way because he was 25. He was kind of butch. As far as the guys go, you know, forklift driver, he was a little bit more of a um, uh, more masculine of a man. So it didn't really fit the profile. But for some reason, they connected on the app and it was going to work, whether maybe Port was just in the need to, to get someone, to kill someone. Gotcha. But and you know what's interesting about Port when I was researching him is he was on every app that every male gay app there was out there, like names I didn't even know, but he seemed to have all these different profiles under different names. Is that? Do you come across that? Yeah, and I'll tell you, that's, that is common. Um, it's common um, for the guys to have different profiles and different apps, but not so much to kill people. Right. What it is is because, you know, they're attracted to different types of people. And, you know, you have one profile and you put that you like, you know, bears or you like hair, or you don't. Like you put the different features and you put yours. They might not like you in general. So you change your profile so that it makes those people think you're attractive. So you, you change your profile, your name and all that, and some of your pictures to make it look like it's a different sort of person that that would more fit your what that what they are looking for. So it's kind of a game. So that's not totally unusual um, because it's not like they charge you for it most of the apps. Interesting. When that when that inquest is published, what do you think that they're going to find out? Do you think they'll find out that there are more murders attributable to Port, or do you think that people will be fired or censured, or, or do you have any thoughts about what might happen? Yeah, you'll definitely see some people punished over it. Uh, it'll all be street cops. It won't be anybody important. It won't be anybody at a high level because that's just how it goes. Uh, they'll throw the people under the bus that were initially charged with the investigation because that, that was their responsibility. You might see a sergeant or a corporal that, that, that takes a hit for it. You'll see some people relieved of their job, and um, and it'll just kind of wash away. I doubt that they'll come out with any of the new victims because, ah, man, how do, you, how do you start back? How do you go back know. now, you know, four or five years, and, and, and what do you do? You know, okay, you got, you got 68 names. You start going to the families, and of course, you now, and I don't want to sound cold-hearted, but you go to a family. Now that this has all come out, if if could you imagine you're you're a parent and you have a child that was killed, you know, a 19 year old or 20, and and or overdosed, and then all of a sudden the cops come back four or five years later and say, well, uh, did he know port? Did he go to parties? Was he on apps? And you're kind of like, a lot of the parents are going to automatically think that. Port did it, or Port could have killed True, him, right. and they're going to like that better than if their son was just out and overdosed oh, in the park. That's a good point. That's a good point. Right? Yes. I mean, that's being human. That's being realistic. Sure. And I think that, you know, I would want that. I wouldn't want, not, not that I want my kid killed, but I wouldn't, you know what I'm saying? Of course, that's no, a, absolutely. absolutely. It's a hard thing it's to deal with, and what would you... And each person has to really be honest, even not saying it out loud, but think about it for a minute. Cops show up after you've heard about a mass murder like this years, four or five years later, and then starts questioning you about your your kid's contact with this person, if there was, or with the gay community, or with the apps. Uh, man, that's got to be... And, and they're not really going to come up with an answer, because how could they? All right. Right? If court doesn't admit to other victims if he won't it's actually write down a list and say this is what i what i did or who i picked up they're not going to really know they're going to have guesswork so you'll see that that whole thing just kind of go under under yeah yeah, they'll they'll punish some people publicly and and let some cops go and it was terrible and and they might even have to pay out the families a little bit of money you know they're right so one of the families tailors are suing the the police correct Right, right, and 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 they have a very good case, and rightfully so. Um, I, I think that uh, that's why some cops will pay for it. You know what well, I'm they saying? did the police's job. They were the ones who had, who asked who that other guy was with their with their yeah. brother in the they, CCTV. Video. They pushed it like the yeah. cops would just kind of look. You know, yeah. like you know, what would you be thinking? Right. You find a body. There's a suicide note, and it's because the guy overdosed the, the body you found a month before. 
and you just kind of don't follow up, close it as an overdose and walk, walk away. That seems a bit bizarre to me. Yeah, that's a shame. That, that one particular instance, how can you just say, well, well I don't know. What, what can you, how can you, so that's where you're going to see, you're going to see those investigators are the ones that will be thrown under the bus. Right, the ones, the initial Right there. Right, yeah, yeah that, that little group right there because they, they can't really excuse them for that. So they'll throw them out. It was just in, inadequate, incompetent cops, bad police work. Sorry, we fired them. And there'd be a little bit of a, you know, buff, you know a little bit of kerfuffle for for a month. And then and then Donald Trump will do something. And, right, and then the news, it'll be all be well, off the news, know. right? Don't, don't, well, you everybody know. will forget. I'll be looking for the inquest. Yeah. Alan, we are at the 50-minute mark. Is there anything else that we didn't cover that you'd like to share or anything you'd like to add? No, I think it's great. I awesome. appreciate being on, and uh, it's a good book. It's a it's a uh, short read book, um, so it's not um, you know you see the size of it. It's part of a series. Uh -huh. um, if it does well, um, they'll ask me to expand it, and it'll be a full novel with, um, and I'll have the full trial included, and I'll have twelve letters included that weren't Excellent. in this one. So we'll see. Excellent. You so know, where can people find the book? Um, and as far as uh, it's of course on Amazon, it's in paperback and and ebook right now. It's being made into audio, and then that'll be a couple of weeks. Then, of course, in the states, it's um, in Barnes and Noble and Indie, and the and in Canada, it's in uh, Chapters. Excellent, Alan R. Warren. Again, the title of the book. Let me get back to it. Is the Grinder Serial Killer, Stephen Port, British Criminals, Volume 2. Thank you so much for the interview. Thank you. All right, cool, man. That was great, man. A great interview. Went super fast. Oh. Great book, too, by yeah. the way. So excellent book. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. Yeah, not a problem. I, I enjoy doing it. So, Good. Uh, well, I hope it does great. I hope it does great and you expand on it. I'd love to read uh, any other information you put into that. Yeah, it's